you've heard or read from time to time how my mentor, Jupp Meininger, worked in the last year of his life to get me to give up expectations. Now that's tough. A child of the 60s with so much potential, told repeatedly by his parents he could be anything he set his mind to, certainly developed expectations. There's a difference between a want and an expectation. A want is captured in visualization. It's building a dream list of 43 things to do before I die. But it's not an expectation. Wants are developed and nurtured totally in the learner-researcher persona. They don't have knower-judger shoulds in front of them. You should be an engineer is an expectation. I want to be a rock star is a want. I can't say that Whitney Houston didn't want to do what she's done for the past three decades, which is nothing short of amaze us with her grace and beauty and perfect voice. I tend to think she lived for most of her moments in front of adoring audiences. There's a coaching session I've just developed that explores just because I'm good at it, does that mean I want to do it? I've witnessed parents of budding gymnasts spend 15, 20 hours a week in a gym admonishing their obviously talented daughters to work toward even more perfection because the competition for collegiate scholarships is so tough. I know of one who was sent away to actually live with her coach for several years, and she just wanted to be a librarian, and she became one, by the way. I frustrated a series of piano teachers in my youth who saw me as potentially successful in piano competitions. I wanted to play soccer and later drive cars fast. I'm very pleased I prioritized both, and I still enjoy playing the piano. I hope Whitney enjoyed her singing, but in some ways I'm suspect. From the time she was a child, Whitney Houston, daughter of gospel singer Sissy Houston, cousin of Dionne Warwick, and Aretha Franklin's godchild, was expected to deliver. The piece of her life she had any control over, her voice, carried her to altitudes reserved for superstars but other pieces of her life kept dragging her underwater. She was expected to maintain a successful marriage, but just picked the wrong guy, I guess. She was expected to exhibit her talents almost on demand for moguls, agents, record companies, while keeping a storybook life on track. To rid yourself of frustration, Meininger would tell me, give up the concept of expectation. When one can't give up the intimidating expectation, how does one escape? Cocaine? Not that Miss Houston's demise has been ruled as such, but what would you say the most extreme eradication of frustration would be? Suicide? She's not the first. She will not be the last. Her frustration, though, has ended. I'm Kim DeMott. This is another Moment of Clarity. Mm.